What should we expect from the Los Angeles Clippers without Paul George going into the postseason? Who will play for Ty Lu in the playoffs? Talk about all that today. Welcome into the Lockdown NBA preview. I'm Nick Angstead of Lockdown NBA, and I'm joined by Darian Baziri of Lockdown Clippers to give you everything you need to know about the Los Angeles Clippers going into the playoffs. Darian, let's talk about this. There's been some injuries. There's been some trades. What's the biggest on-court story for the Clippers this season? On-court story would probably be which players Ty Lue decides to play and which ones he doesn't. I think all season the Clippers have had a problem of too much depth. And guys like Robert Covington getting 30-plus DNP coaches' decisions. Guys like Terrence Mann, fan favorite, not getting enough minutes, playing too many guards at once, not knowing when to go away from Reggie Jackson and Marcus Morris, where the organization had to come step in and say something. Um, I think that's been the biggest problem in terms of on-court is really – the who's playing and also which kind of Clipper team are we going to get from an effort standpoint? There's the Clipper team that you saw at Phoenix before the Russ move was made. You saw two games against uh, the Dallas Mavericks, which you cover where they showed up and were the right kind of, you know, defensive team with the, the mindset of we're going to fight over screens. We're going to be sharp on rotations, really just going to be focused. And then there's other times where they're very lazy. And I think obviously both of the points kind of go hand in hand when you play, guys that aren't as defensive minded, your defense will get worse. But even with those guys playing, I think from the top to bottom, when the Clippers come out with a certain level of defensive intensity, look at a different team. What's the playoff rotation? I think this is, this is a really interesting question. I'm probably more interested in your answer than maybe anybody else that I'll do this with. What is the playoff rotation? Who do you expect to be the starting five for the Clippers? And then a couple of bench players that are guaranteed to play some time, especially against this, the Suns in the first round series. And then who are some guys on the bubble? So when we got Russell Westbrook, we had 12 players, counting Marcus Morris Sr., that had a shot to be playing, deserved to be playing per se. Marcus Morris has kind of been taken out of the fold. They're listing it as an injury, but I truly believe that he wasn't happy with being taken out of the starting lineup and he's just not going to play anymore. Mm. I'm pretty sure about that. And without Paul George, that leaves you with now 10 players. In the playoffs, you normally see coaches go to eight or nine. So the starting lineup, what I expect to be, is going to be the one we run with for a couple of games now since Paul George has been out. That is Russell Westbrook, Eric Gordon in the backcourt, front court of Kawhi, Nicholas Batum, and Ivica Zubat starting. Off the bench, Norman Powell and is guaranteed to play. Terrence Mann, I would say as well. Mason Plumlee and Bones Highland and Robert Covington, I see two of those guys playing. I don't know if they will go 10 deep, and if they do, it will be Robert Covington getting a couple of minutes, I think, when Kawhi is out, especially if KD is in when Kawhi is not. But if I had to choose, he's been more Bones friendly, Ty Lue, than Rocco. Rocco has been that 10th man. So if we go nine men, nine man rotation, the odd man out based on the end of the regular season would be Robert Covington. So that would be to keep an eye on it is either going to be 10 men or nine men. I wouldn't think, you know, Amir Coffee or anyone else is going to get in there. What are the biggest strengths and weaknesses of this Clippers team? Basically, how have they won games this season and how do they lose games in general this season? Well, the, the first one is obvious. It goes back to what kind of team we're going to show up defensively, what kind of team we're going to be defensively. But a lot of the wins have come from the sheer brilliance of Kawhi Leonard. I mean, after he had that early setback where he missed like 15 of the first 20 games or something along those lines, he comes back in early December with Paul George, makes a game-winning shot in Charlotte in his first game back. And after that, I think he's only missed like, you know, 15 games or something like that. He has been relatively healthy the rest of the season. Yes, he missed 30 games, but a lot of those were in the beginning. He's really been fairly healthy the rest of the way. And I'm not going to lie, Nick, I did not expect this kind of Kawhi Leonard first season back. He has been basically just as good as 2021. His shooting splits since that December game have been amazing. And he's totally transformed our offense, you know, when he plays as any star would do. But I think Russell Westbrook has also helped a lot too. I think he has given us something that we lack, a really good passer, a guy that can get downhill. And mainly with Russ, his attitude's been so much better here than with the Lakers. He's more engaged defensively more often than not. He rebounds. And the main thing, when he's not playing well and Ty has gone away from him, he's been all smiles on the bench, been a consummate pro, and that's all you can ask for. You're somebody that watches a lot of Lakers games as well, covering for, for your channel, Dime Dropper. Uh, what's right. the biggest difference between Russell Westbrook Lakers that didn't work and seemed like he was dragging that team down to now Clippers Russell Westbrook? It seems like he's at least lifting them up a little bit in some ways and is okay with like getting benched at, at certain times. 
I think it starts with feeling wanted. I think the Lakers tried it in the beginning of the last season, and it just did not seem like Vogel liked the idea of Russ. I wonder how much pull Vogel had in that decision being made to, to acquire Russ because it seemed like Vogel liked LeBron at the controls, and I heard that Russ was disappointed with having the ball taken out of his hands, and I'm shocked that he was going to a team with LeBron James on it, but we are asking Russ to handle the ball, to be that point guard to play with guys like Paul George and Kawhi who are going to come off screens and operate fairly quickly off the catch. It's just a much better fit for him. And obviously without the $46 million price tag, he's got less pressure on him. And I think our media has done a, a job of making a concerted effort to just be nicer to him straight up. <laughs> and I think he senses that he's all smiles. It's like a totally different person. And you know, this stuff that was, Attached to Russ, a cancer, a locker room problem, all this. Only one place have we heard that. You know, yeah, he and KD might not have always seen eye to eye, but for the most part, wherever he went, there's been glowing reviews of Russell Westbrook as a teammate. It's been no different here. It just didn't work out over there. It's like everything you just said is what you could say about Kyrie and Dallas. It's just kind of funny. Sometimes it's just you need a new change of scenery. Like you just need to go somewhere else and it'll just work out. What are your expectations for this team? This season, let's go three levels here. Let's go. What are the fans' expectations? What is the team's expectations themselves? Like, what do they think that they should do in the postseason? And what do you think they should do in the postseason? I think most fans are expecting a loss in this series, but there's a this Clipper fan, so there's so much optimism always, regardless of what our record is. So <laughs> I think there's a lot of Clipper fans. If you if you ask Clipper fans, I think the majority might say we're going to win, but that's you know, just off of their bias. I think most Clipper fans are concerned heading into this series and reasonably so for me, you know, I do expect to lose, but I got a weird feeling about this one, Nick. I think the Clippers just, we thrive as underdogs and I think there's, it's, it's a perfect situation to be in. There's not much to expect uh, as far as the team, they should expect to win. I mean, they've been championship or bust kind of attitude from the beginning with what they say, not how they act and play with what they say. They say they're <laughs> championship or bust. They don't always show that. And this is where the two things that everyone's been banking on have to come out. Playoff Kawhi Leonard and playoff Ty Lu. All season, Kawhi hasn't really been criticized like that because he's been so good, but Ty Lu definitely has been criticized. This is the first season in his three years as Clipper coach where he's really been scrutinized and rightfully so. This is where he has to show he's the Mr. Adjustments guy. He's still one of the best coaches in the league, and he can undo all the things that he did wrong in the season. Currently, you said that they should, you know, the, the team should expect to beat uh, the Suns. But right now, FanDuel has them at a plus 330 underdog. The Suns minus 450 to, uh, to beat them. That's, uh, that's, that's higher odds than the, the Warriors to beat the, the Kings, which is, is kind of weird to me. I would think the Kings would have a better – uh, Warriors would have a better chance to beat the Kings than the Suns over the Clippers right now. Um, what did what do the Clippers have to do to beat the Suns in this first round series? They need to be that defend the good defensive Clippers in basically every game, at least four out of seven. But here's the thing: even if we play good defense in one or two games, if Kevin Durant and Devin Booker just get hot, there's just nothing you can do sometimes. But if the Clippers come out with that right attitude, starting games has been really big for us. The games that we start well, we have a much better chance of winning. You can probably say that about any team, but the Clippers have been pretty slow starters this season. And then I think one thing they're going to need, actually two things, Kawhi Leonard needs to be the best player in the series. I do not see many avenues where we win the series and Kawhi doesn't play better than anyone on their side. And then I think Norman Powell, he's just come off an injury. He was, in my opinion, right up there for sixth man of the year uh, winner before he got hurt. He was struggling when he just came back. But these last three games of the regular season against Phoenix, Portland, and the Lakers, he has been every bit of that Norman Powell sixth man of the year candidate before he got hurt. He's been awesome. I think the Clippers need about 18 to 20 points a game from him in this series to win. Mm. You can go check out everything from the Locked On Clippers podcast daily, five days a week with uh, Darian Vaziri covering them. And uh, you can go get it on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us on the Locked On NBA playoff preview.